What's up? Good morning, A to Z Sports Live on a Tuesday, the morning after the Titans got beat down by the Buffalo Bills on Monday night football, 41-7, the final score. We went over it with a massive postgame show yesterday presented by Buddy Allen Carpet One Nashville.com. But today we wake up after a little bit of sleep and try to figure out how to put the pieces back together and what the Titans season might feel like moving forward. And Stephen King is right on YouTube. The YouTube waiting room chat is already on fire. We've just been live for 30 seconds and uh, people are not handling things well, Zach. We had over 5,000 comments live last night on our Facebook and YouTube combined. Uh, so this is going to be probably a lot of the same as the Titans are 0-2 for the first time since 2012. And it's not the fact they're 0-2, it's how they looked to get to 0-2. So we'll discuss it. We'll hear an audio a video and play a video from Mike Vrabel's press conference uh, last night on what he uh, thinks the Titans have to do to get back. We'll hear from Caleb Farley as well, looking beat down in the locker room after uh, the Titans corners gave up three touchdown catches to Stephon Diggs. Uh, and then, uh, Zach, because it's a Tuesday and the Titans had their worst loss of the Mike Vrabel era. We had decided to punt like Ryan Stonehouse on trivia for today and flip it with throwing shade. I, I think it wasn't appropriate for us to do trivia today. So we'll do trivia tomorrow and we'll move throwing shade. That's normally on Wednesdays up to Tuesdays to continue the theme of just angriness on this Tuesday morning. Zach, welcome in. Hope you, uh, you got some, uh, some good Z's last night, at least uh, after uh, the post game show. Well, the, I mean, it, it, it's so hard on primetime games, whether you win or lose, you know, yeah. you're talking 50 minutes after the game and, you know, you're in the chat, the chat's wild, and then you go to sleep or you try to go to sleep to get the adrenaline to calm down. And then all of a sudden you're sitting back in this chair. So it's really more of a blink of an eye. But I think what 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 it does, it's like anything, once you react or have something happen and then the next day, you start to diagnose what's the solution, or at least that's how my, my mind works. It's not to concentrate on the problem. The problem is the problem. Let's try to find the solution to the problem, and the Titans are going to have to try to do that on a short week and try to prevent their franchise from going 0-3. Austin, I wonder if you have that in the hopper. When was the last time the Titans went 0-3? I mean, I know when they started the season 0-6, so I don't know if it was that season or if it was another season. I'll have to go back because in 2012, they started 0-2, like we mentioned, but they did win in week three in a crazy overtime home game against the Detroit Lions. So, Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they they did start 1-2 and two that year. So that's uh, I'll have to go dig through uh, the internet uh, throughout the show to find that stat for you. Yeah, and uh, we, we are welcoming as many people as possible if you were on last night's chat and are just joining us or you're a consistent A to Z sports viewer we welcome you guys in. We broadcast live on three different platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. If you're on YouTube, we will tweet out those segment links, our YouTube links, on our Twitter account, at A to Z Sports. We've got good content rolling over there and great content on our YouTube page. So subscribe if you're on YouTube, and you will get locked in on you know post-game press conferences, post-game locker room video. All of that was posted last night right into our, our YouTube channel, which is, uh, it's great. It's growing. We appreciate everybody that is involved in it. And also Facebook, our road to 100K. We're about 80 plus thousand followers on our Facebook page. We're trying to get to 100,000. You guys can help that out by sharing the show. Bottom left corner of your screen, share, share, not a public. Sharing is caring and caring is sharing, as we say on this show. So share the show. And as more people pile in, we will pop up in your Facebook friends newsfeed. So uh, let's get this party started on a Tuesday after a demoralizing loss on Monday Night Football. Yeah, let's do it officially. Welcoming to A to Z Sports Powered, as always, by the Bet MGM app. I'm Austin Stanley. He is Zach Bingham. Make sure you follow us all over social media as we are Nashville's on demand sports talk network. And we go live every weekday morning at 8 central time on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, like Zach said, find links to the segments on our Twitter timeline at A to Z Sports and also our Instagram at A to Z Sports 2. We got to thank our sponsors uh, because they make it happen for us. And they help out you guys with Wilson County Hyundai. Make them a part of your new car buying process by going to see them in Lebanon or simply at Wilson County Hyundai. 
TheBoneandJointInstitute.com, the Bone and Joint Institute, BoneandJointTN.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care, plus Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get better with Farm Bureau Health Plans, better coverage, better rates, better service. Learn more about a health plan for you, FBHP.com slash ATOZ. And Hughes and Coleman Injury Lawyers, the official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans. If you've been injured in a car wreck, give them a call, 800-800-4600. So uh, as ugly as that was last night, the Titans are 0-2. And they're just, you know, slightly behind the Jacksonville Jaguars at one and one uh, atop the AFC South. So all the season's not over. So I did feel like, Zach, it was important for me to come out and say this morning early in the show, the season's not over. The Titans are also a complete mess right now of a football team after being dismantled by the Buffalo Bills 41 to 7. It was 7-7, 34 unanswered points. Uh, really, the the offense giving up ten points in the second half by itself. With, or I guess Kyle Phillips and the special teams did with three of those, and then Ryan Tannehill's pick six that ended his night. So there is a big mess to clean up, Zach. But how are you feeling uh, after uh, the few hours of sleep uh, that we had last night? Oh no, the season's not over. And look, you know the zero and two start, right? It's like only nine percent of teams out of four hundred have ever made the playoffs after zero and two start. Well, that is also you know a, his, uh, a historic stat that only had sixteen games in it and not as many playoff teams. Well, that's since the merger. So that's since nineteen seventy. So there were less. There were fourteen games scheduled. There was uh, there were less teams in the playoffs. You're absolutely right. Right. So you have to. Uh, and I was Jake and I are our social media growth manager. We were talking about that last night. It it, it is alarming that stat at zero and two, but it is not the rule in today's football. Now does. You know, the Las Vegas Raiders game turned into a must win. Yeah, it's it's probably, you know, you can't go to 0-3. No. But more importantly, they have to fix a lot of their problems, right? It's not just about getting blown out and embarrassed on Monday Night Football. This roster and this particular team and this coaching staff have a lot of problems that they did not fix from really quarters three and four of game one to game two. They, they didn't fix any of those. And that's the reason why they got the result that they did. And, you know, it's tasked with Mike Vrabel to go through and figure that type of stuff out and get his players to play better. And, you know, I think one guy that we lose sight of because we were just reacting. Here's here's one of those things where you wake up and you mm-hmm. look at the box score and you go, Derek Henry had 13 carries for 25 yards. You are never, ever going to win a game if Derrick Henry has 13 carries for 25 yards, he's your best player. He's your identity on offense. And, you know, they keep tossing him the football and he keeps getting tackled behind the line of scrimmage. 25 yards, you're never going to win a game when, when your best player is doing that. And I think that's where I started this morning as I diagnosed all the things that went wrong. Look, we're going to find out about Taylor Lewan and Bud Dupree and some of the injuries that occurred last night. We still Mm -hmm. need updates on that, but that was my initial reaction. Let's go to the source. The source is 22, 13 carries for 25 yards. will never win you a football game. Yeah. And again, like you brought up the tosses uh, because on the first three drives, the Titans had, which I think they only had four drives in the first half uh, because the last drive was right before half when Tannehill got sacked and they went to the half. Uh, down 17-7. But in the first three drives of the half, things were going well, and then a toss play lost yards. Now, on the opening drive, the toss play lost four yards. The Titans were able to overcome that. I believe that was the pass to Austin Hooper right after the fact to move the chains or the one to NWI, one of the two. Uh, But the Titans were able to overcome that situation and get out of that long Uh, down and distance because of a lost play. They couldn't do that in the second drive when the toss play lost yards, and they couldn't do it on the third drive either. So again, I I said this last night in the postgame show, uh, you know, at some point in the 50 minutes that we were on, that when you call the toss play for the third time in that game, third time in as many drives, what is the offensive group on the field thinking to themselves? That they just ran this thing twice for negative five yards total and they're called it again. Like I, my mind goes back to Terry Rubisky days and saying, well, you know, you just got to run it till it pops. 
Like at, at what point do you have to be like, this doesn't work. Let's stop doing it and try to do something else because Derrick Henry is so important to this franchise at every level. He helps every other, everybody out. If you play offense or defense or special teams, and he's massive for the fan base and the marketing and the relations of what this franchise stands for, yet they continue to put him in bad situations that puts the team in even worse situations. It, it just continues to befuddle me. Well, and that's why you lose 41-7 to seven on prime time. Uh, with plays like that, they're going to have to diagnose you know, this play calling. And I think that's kind of where we're going next with Teron Davenport who's up at Buffalo, asking Mike Vrabel some questions. And look, Austin, you and I have covered NFL football long enough to know after games like that, not many questions are answered. Not in the locker room, not in the press conference, not by the quarterback, not by the running back. There's just not a lot of explanation. They just got their ass kicked. But TD did ask uh, some pretty good questions to Mike Vrabel, and – we got his response. Here's the back and forth. How much is play calling? How much is that involved in, in that outcome that you had? How much is play calling? I mean, playing and play calling go hand in hand. Um, you know, there's always going to be some plays out there as a player that you wish you had back. There's always going to be calls as a play caller that you wish you had back. Um, now is not the time. We've never done it. It's not going to be about one person. We got our asses kicked. Plain and simple. They outcoached us. They outplayed us. And, and that's the definition of it. And so we're going to get back to work, and, and we're going to figure out a way to win a football game. But when does it become to a point where, all right, we can't get out coach, we can't get out player? I, I mean, I think that that's the whole idea. Like, you know, I mean, we want to make sure that, you know, what we're doing, you know, we believe in. It's been successful. Uh, it's going to continue to be successful. We just got to make sure that we're, we're doing all the things that, uh, that help us take a look at the film, um, you know, I mean, you just, you know, there's no magic call to run. There's no, no magic, uh, formula. It's called getting back to work and doing it together. And so Mike Vrabel is going to do what coaches do and say, you know, we got to get back to work. We got out coached. We got out played. Uh, we got our ass kicked and we have to stick together to get this thing right. And look, all those things are not incorrect. It's just when it continues to happen time after time and the, we got to coach better, got to play better thing that Mike Vrabel typically falls back on in these situations is really starting to fall on, on uh, deaf ears, whether it's the media or whether it's the fan base now too. So uh, Zach, let's go ahead and react to that with everybody here. We had this question because Mike Vrabel said uh, something I thought was interesting that we, he said something along the lines of the Titans know what they like to do and they're good at it. And they got to get back to it and fix it. So do you trust the Titans coaches to get this season back on track. Do you trust the Titans coaches to get this season back on track? But Zach, tell us all about Farm Bureau Health Plans. Yeah, FBHP.com is where you need to go to get your new health plan. I got my new health plan early on this year, and I'm really glad that I did. I've reaped the benefit. It's better, better coverage, better rates, better service. That's what they stand behind, and that's what I've gotten. Uh, I, I really, truly have, and I've uh, – it's helped me out tremendously. I get uh, dental coverage. You get contacts. You get free teeth cleanings. I mean, that's a particular plan that I got, and I take advantage of it when I got the flu at a teledoc conference. All of these things, and I save 20% from my previous plan. So i saving money, and I have a better plan. It, it makes logical sense. Get your quote today. You can go to fbhp.com slash A to Z or give them a call. You can go online, 200-plus locations across the state of Tennessee. That's Farm Bureau Health Plans, fbhp.com slash A-T-O-Z. Don't forget, download the BetMGM app and continue to use our code A-T-O-Z Sports. When you do, you get a risk-free bet up to $1,000 on your first bet on pro football. That's risk-free bet up to $1,000 when you download the BetMGM app and sign up using our code A-T-O-Z Sports. I did hit my digs. Uh, anytime touchdown, he scored three. All I needed was one. I got that one. I missed my other bet, including a Ryan Tannehill anytime touchdown. And the pick six, unfortunately, didn't count for me. Uh, but you can take advantage of BetMGM with the code ATOZ Sports for risk free bet on pro football up to 
$1,000. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. 21 or older, Tennessee only, new customer offer. All promotions, subject qualifications, and other requirements. Rewards issued with knowledge of for bets. There's credit for bets expiring seven days. For problem game and support, call Tennessee Redline 800-889-9789. Zach, uh, we're asking the question uh, now is, uh, do you trust the Titans coaches to get this season back on track? What are you seeing from the conversation? Well, and let's, let's look back at where we've come from to the start of the show. I mean, yeah. we, I think we established and both agreed that the season is not over at right. 0 and two. You, you're, you got a lot more games to play. This is a reaction after one of their, well, the worst loss in this coach's tenure in, in Nashville. And, I do think we'll have some reactions, but I'm curious to see who still has faith. Jonathan is saying no. Uh, Chris says the Titans can never figure it out. No, they're too stubborn. Uh, nope from Titans Kyle. Hell no from only Memphis. Samuel does say yes, so there's some faith, uh, faith there. John, Daff, and Derek all say no. No from Roy. And this is, it, it, again, it's very straight up, is can they fix it? Uh, Terrence says, I don't trust Downing. So I would ask Terrence, you know, if Downing is fired in the next couple of weeks, do you change your perspective, right? Do you think that, do you trust him a little bit more? Uh, No from William Young. No from Jay, Sam, Anthony, and Deshaun Washington all say no. Xavier is honest in saying that he's on the fence. He doesn't know if he trusts him. Jamie says no. Vrabel uh, was an old boy system. Uh, Army fix this now Amy. for the fan. Or Amy fix this now for the fan. <laughs> the old, I thought it was old boy Army. But, uh, you know, Jamie's talking about. So let, I'm going to stop there because I want you to replay okay. the first half. Yeah. This is a conversation that Austin and I have pre show trying to figure out what this particular line, and I'll let you kind of set this up, Austin. That particular word that Vrabel says in this. I think I figured it out. That was the second time that I heard the audio. I think I figured out exactly what he was trying to say. It goes to what Jamie was saying. So you're talking about the it aspect, right? Okay, so uh, here's the full clip from Mike Vrabel uh, here. How much is play calling? How much is that involved in in that outcome that you had? How much is play calling? I mean, playing and play calling go hand in hand. Um, You know, there's always going to be some plays out there as a player that you wish you had back. There's always going to be calls as a play caller that you wish you had back. Um, now is not the time. We've never done it. It's not going to be about one person. We got our asses kicked. Now is not the time. We've never done it. It's never about one person. We got our asses kicked, right? I think what he is saying is at this press conference, I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus. I'm not here to throw players or coaches or fans or anybody under the bus. I'm not that that I'm not going to be baited into doing that after we just got our ass kicked 41 to 7. That's what I believe that meant. And you know what? He went on to not do that, right? He 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 stood strong and he protected his players. But it goes to what Jamie is saying, the good old boy system of you there is a certain time that you need to protect your own. I mean, you guys are a team, right? They 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 go they've gone to training camp together. They're going to war together. All of these ty- type of things. It when things when the wheels start to fall off, though, somebody has to be held accountable. And if Mike Vrabel is not willing to, we've never done it. Throw somebody uh, and hold them accountable, and maybe get rid of them or replace them. He doesn't have much time to keep that type of philosophy because. It's just going down. Owen turn Owen two cannot turn to Owen three, and it sure as hell cannot turn to Owen four because Austin. And I, I'm not trying to look too far ahead, but if you're Owen four, that means that you've lost in Indianapolis to the Colts, and okay. your season then is officially over. It is not officially over today. But what is Mike Vrabel going to do really in the next 14 days or so? To change, they didn't the, have for Zach six. Well, f- well, Five. I'm talking about. Well, I, I'm talking about uh, four oh, weeks. Four. Yeah, because uh. your season is justified at Indy because your competition, as we've all known, the reason why we woke up this morning and started this show saying the season is not over is because the AFC South blows. I mean, that's just the facts. We knew that before the season starts. 
we were confirmed really now that the season has started. That's your road to the playoffs. So you have to focus on that. After four weeks, we will know really what where the Titans stand in this league trying to get into a tournament. Yeah, and Jessica brings up uh, on YouTube, uh, says uh, the moves the GM made are the bigger issue. We will talk about that moving Je- forward I'm, throughout Jessica, the week. Jessica, there you get a little golf clap right there because that tennis, all tennis of that clap. stuff goes unnoticed immediately after the loss. But Jessica's absolutely right. And no, and I, I just for everybody watching, like we are not ignoring that. We will talk about personnel oh, I mean, look, it's tuesday yeah they yeah, don't play yeah. again until sunday <laughs> yeah we've got time we will discuss that on wednesday i'm sure we will discuss that on thursday or friday and on all of the above right so zach so do you trust the coaching staff to get this back on track it's a yes or no question but i don't think it's easy <laughs> do you trust the coaching staff to get it back on track i'm going to say yes because i think they can win the next two games okay if they don't, and that's my justification, as I just talked through, if they're 0-4, uh, 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 trust is gone. The whole season's done. So you start 0-4. So they but, have to be 1-3. and three. I, No, I think they obviously have to beat the Colts because that's a divisional matchup that's in right. Indy. If they go 1-3, and three, I mean, my trust is very – it's waning. It's not f- completely off, but it's it's hanging on by a thread. But I do believe that this team, if they reset and come back and play a good performance at home against the Las Vegas Raiders and beat them, and then you're going up against a Colts team that's had just as many problems. I mean, right? Their running back only rushed for 54 yards this past week. I know Derrick Henry only rushed for 25. But I I still don't think that it is out of the realm of possibility that the Titans can sit at 2-2 and and salvage their season. So I'm not here jumping off the cliff. I'm here saying, yes, I do trust that because they've done it before too. Sure. They've built that trust over time. It's not just because I'm coming off the heels of a blowout and I just don't believe them anymore. They've proven to me before that they can rebound, but they're going to have to rebound in the next two games or they're done. Yeah. So I'm struggling with my answer to this question. And it's basically has to do with the comments that Vrabel made in Teron Davenport's follow up question. We can't get out, coach. We can't get out clear. I, I mean, I think that that's the whole idea. Like, you know, I mean, we want to make sure that, you know, what we're doing, you know, we believe in. It's been successful. Uh, it's going to continue to be successful. We just got to make sure that we're, we're doing all the things that, uh, that help us. Take a look at the film. Um, you know, I mean, you just you know, there's no magic call, Toronto. There's no no magic uh, formula. It's called getting back to work and doing it together. So the part that I think there is that when Vrabel says we believe what we've done in the past will be successful, it has been successful. Yes, it has been successful, but is it still the right approach now? I don't give a damn about the past, right? Right now, does the philosophy that you've made your money on the last couple of years still, is it still the right thing? So I question the horses. It's what Assad said last night in our post game show. Assad says, we don't have the horses. I question the talent compared Because, and people are going to hate me, but I'm going to have to, we're going to have to talk about this at some point. We will not do this, and I'm not going to derail the show. But if they had A.J. Brown, a guy who's had more receiving yards in both the first two games than any Titans receiver has had, then I think I feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I trust the horses. The philosophy, and you asked me the coaching staff, right? Like, you asked me a different question, so I answered it differently. If you would have asked me, do I trust that they have the talent and the horses to go and salvage the season, I'd probably say no. But the coaching staff of what Mike Vrabel just said, the philosophy has worked. Will yeah. it work with these players? But that, that I don't but know. But it's up to the coaches to identify whether that philosophy will still be able to continue to work. And from what Mike Vrabel is saying, they believe in their recipe. But the ingredients have changed, and they're still trying to do the same recipe but they got spoiled ingredients or ingredients that are not ripe. And so it tastes like crap. (laughs) Like, and so at some point the recipe has to change. 
So do I trust that the Titans will adapt and change the recipe? Hell no, I don't. Because they haven't done that. Mike Vrabel is as stubborn as it gets. And both you and I are very stubborn people, right? Mike Vrabel is a stubborn guy too. And so I just don't think it's going to happen. Now, my why I'm struggling with this question is because they went through hell and back last year with all the injuries, the roster transactions, and everything else, and still were able to get it done and win 12 games. That's why I said yes. And, and I and I think that's I think my overall trust in Mike Vrabel cont- keeping this organization together makes me have to answer the question with yes. Yes, that I trust Mike Vrabel to oh, so not. You didn't say uh, so. What's your final answer? You My, that's answer? what I'm talking. That's what I'm, I, that's what I, again. I've admitted like I'm several confused. times. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm struggle again. I'm struggling with this. Overall, I don't trust a lot of things about it, but I also do believe in Mike Vrabel's ability to rally it together, and for them to use one another to benefit. You know, he ended that clip with. And we got to do this together. And while that might sound like a cliche and sunshine and rainbows and kumbaya, I do think it's important because they've always been able to stay together through whatever adversity they've had. They've stuck together and been able to, you know, come out of it. And so I, I don't think Mike Vrabel will allow it to fall apart completely. I think they'll be able to get it back on track. And so I'm going to have to reset because yeah. I don't understand really a lot of things that you said. I'm going to ask the question just directly. Do you trust the Titans coaches, that's plural, right, to get this season back on track? Yes I, or no? I have to say yes because of Mike Vrabel's ability to rally people and this team together. That's the only reason why I'm saying yes. It, he was the coach of the year last year. That's the only reason why I say yes, because he's the head coach. He makes the decisions and he gets this thing back on track. I just don't think it's going to fall apart. I don't think he'll let it fall apart. Now I will say this, uh, Matt Nagy was also a coach of the year and then it quickly unraveled in Chicago for a lot of other reasons too. So I I just, but I, I, at this point in time, Owen two and getting your butts kicked by the best team in football. Like, you know, I believe in the defense I have questions about Todd Downing, and I think that's where we're going to go next in this conversation. Uh, but I do overall, I have to say yes when I trust Mike Vrabel to get Austin, back on track. I, I don't believe in the defense as much, really, I, I, the, because through two games, their secondary is not very good. The, 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 that, that's what that was the whole thing. My whole deal, the entire training camp was the X factor on, and we were talking about top five when Harold Landry was still uh, not injured. Oh, I was sitting here saying the, the secondary, the cornerback position is going to justify what this team can do and if they can be a top five defense. Austin, their corners suck. No, They're not yeah. good. And it's not that they're just trying to keep up. They're not good. They can't cover. They stumble, they fall, they, and so, and then now you have Bud Dupree who's injured and we don't know to what extent, but he didn't return after a hip injury. And that, and that matters in my, in my, you know, without knowing Bud Dupree's situation. Yes. That would Harold change. Landry's my... not walking back through that door. No. Zach Cunningham has regressed from last year. I yeah. mean, I will say that, right. Miss tackles uh, on missed tackles. I, I have more doubts about this team and this roster. I believe in the coaches. Here's what I will say, Austin. I thought you were going to say no because of Todd Downing. Because the word was coaches, not just coach. I think we can all justify Mike Vrabel's a good head coach. Yeah. But coaches, that threw the wrench in the question. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how many people believe that then Mike Vrabel will change the real problem, which is the play calling, which is Todd Downing, in which he refused. There's always going to be calls as a play caller that you wish you had back. Um, now is not the time. We've never done it. It's not going to be about one person. We got our asses kicked. 
He's not going to throw one person under the bus right now. So that's not going to, I don't foresee that. I don't think Todd Downing is going to get fired on Tuesday at 4.30, September 20th. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's still going to be the offensive coordinator and the play caller heading into the Las Vegas Raiders. And so that, I think, is a huge catalyst to see if they can get back and right the ship. Mm -hmm. Because if Todd Downing can't change, then they're doomed. And that's where I'm going to go next. You know, we have a laying down the law segment that we do after every Titans game. And I'm going to lay down a law that I think needs to be implemented as soon as possible. That is presented by Hughes and Coleman, the official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans. If you've been injured in a car wreck, you need a team that will fight for you. The team at Hughes and Coleman injury lawyers will lay it on the line and handle the insurance company. Make sure you get every dollar that you deserve. They've recovered over $1 billion dollars for their clients across the state of Tennessee and in Kentucky, and they will do the same thing for you. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, it's pretty simple. You get a free case consultation when you call Hughes and Coleman at 800-800-4600. So call Hughes and Coleman Injury Lawyers at 800-800-4600, principal office in Nashville, Tennessee. A to Z Sports, we are powered by BetMGM. Download that app and get hooked up with a risk-free bet up to a thousand dollars that's where they're hooking you up bet mgm i'm repping it today look they took a little bit of my money yesterday but it doesn't mean that i can't take some of theirs this upcoming weekend that's the best part promo code atoz sports that's a-t-o-z s-p-o-r-t-s risk-free bet up to a thousand dollars for new users for our users use that promo code in the promo tab No spaces, all one word, A to Z Sports. Download the app today. All right, so laying down the law. Right now, it's just a bill, but and only a bill, but we know that it needs to get to Capitol Hill to become a law. So I'm going to lay down the law, Zach, that something has to change with the Titans' offensive play calling. And I'm not saying it has to be firing Todd Downing publicly, but you've got Tim Kelly in the building who has been an offensive play caller who has taken not very good players in Houston and actually made them competitive in situations over the last couple of years in a terrible situation with the Houston Texans for many different reasons. But you have Tim Kelly there and you have Todd Downing. Todd Downing has now called plays for 20 Titans games as offensive coordinator. There haven't been a lot of great moments. He's actually been better in the opening script of the game. They scored 14 points on their opening drive through two games this season. They only scored 13 points on 17 opening drives last season. That's ridiculous. So he's gotten better there, but he's gotten worse after the fact. At least last year, he was a second-half team. Remember we talked about Lawan? The Titans have to be a second-half team. They've been absolute garbage in the second half. They've been outscored like tw- uh, 45 to, I'm sorry, 55 to no- uh, to 7 in the second half so far this season. Yeah, 37 nothing in the third quarter. Yeah, that's pretty atrocious, right? So something's got to change. It can be as much as firing Todd Downing and removing him from the staff, or as little as just Tim Kelly being more involved and taking more, more of an ownership role of the game planning and the game day play calling. Because Tim Kelly's title is past game coordinator right? So Tim Kelly is very involved during the week in game planning with that title, but it's Todd Downing's show on game days. And that show stinks. Throw tomatoes at it. It's terrible. Something has to change. This is me laying down the law because if nothing changes, then you're just digging yourself a deeper grave and you're going to be spinning your wheels and being bad and having a lot more questions and having to move on from players and highly paid guys and questioning coaches up and down the roster and drafting a lot higher than you want to. So you've got to change something with the offensive play caller on game day situations. Well, also they have to learn how to run the football, like learn how to run the football because they are a running football team. And that has eluded them the last two weeks. And I've said this, if the Tennessee Titans can't run the football, they'll lose every time. They're not set up. That's why Ryan Tannehill, I have questioned Ryan Tannehill. I've been out on Ryan Tannehill. 
Ryan Tannehill cannot take this team where they need to go. You are praying to the good Lord above that Derrick Henry and this defense can. But if Derrick Henry has 13 carries and only has 25 yards, he cannot. And we don't know. We talked about this last night at the postgame show. I still have no clue who Robert Woods and Traylon Burks are. I don't know who they are as wide receivers. Austin Hooper has caught like two passes, right? I mean, maybe maybe three in the two games. But the, the pieces... No, just two. Just two. The new guys, yeah. we don't know a, anything about. So that goes back to our previous statement of do we believe in the coaches to right this wrong? Yeah, I, I still think that there's time to do that. But I can't sit here and believe in a roster that I don't understand. I think that is also a frustration for all of Titans fans and all the chat sitting here. They don't know who to go to. Like Todd Downing, yeah, 20 games. He's called 20 games and he hasn't been great. He's fixed some things and then messed more things up. But it's hard for for us to diagnose this team without knowing what's in the medicine, (laughs) right? Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And so I I, I I I agree with your laying down the law for the Hughes and Coleman uh, segment. When is that going to happen? Uh, typically, bills don't become a law for a long time. So yeah, unfortunately, in the process of that, uh, my law will take a, a while to get passed. Um, well, so- the fear is that it will get too far gone yep. that then the law will not be for this year. It will be for another year. Yeah. And so I, every once in a while, I bring this up like journalism school. And I got my journalism degree from the university of Tennessee 10 years ago. Good Lord. Uh, but um, one thing that has always stuck with me is that whenever you're wrong in journalism, the rule is get right as fast as you bleeping can. And the bleep is actually in there. That's, that's the rule. Get right as fast as you can. And it doesn't seem like the Titans are going to do that. It's that they they are fearful of overreacting when they're not overreacting. Because here's how Mike Vrabel is going to view this and ha- here's how he's going to sell it. Mike Vrabel will sell this as, guys, it's just week two. We're not going to make an overreactionary move. When in reality, no, it's game 20. It's not week two. It's not game two. It's game 20. This is not a new problem. This is a new problem. Yeah, you don't overreact in two games. This is now an ongoing issue where you have data of Todd Downing not being very good at calling plays in the NFL and ask the Raiders about it too because you can go back to that season as well. And so, you know, somebody, uh, yeah, Caleb says whoever's in charge of personnel packages needs to be fired too. And then I did see Nicole, I think it was, that said that uh, other teams are making second half adjustments. Here it is. Natalie, excuse me. Other teams are adjusting in the second half and the Titans are coming out with the same game plan expecting it to work. Well, here's the here's where Natalie and, and, and Jacob's comment come into play because here's the second half adjustment and the personnel mistakes. Like Torrey Carter and Derrick Henry out wide with Jeff Swain and Hooper in the slot and Burks on the other slot. Like who comes up with that? And why is that expected to work? Well, Tim Kelly may come up with that. He is the but passing they, they game coordinator. That, like, that was in the third quarter. Like, what the hell? Like, but you're asking you. who came up with that. I'm saying, well, if you look at job description, that should have been Tim Kelly's job. I hope it's not Tim Kelly because the Titans are flat out doomed if that was Tim Kelly's idea. You hope, but I'm, it it's just I don't like you're at halftime and you're like. We got to play, right? Like, you guys remember what we practiced with the fullback out wide right, the 260-pound running back out wide left? Yeah, let's do that. So that'll really throw them off. So uh, we're not going to talk about this on this show, but this is why we do this show every single morning at 8 a.m. Probably be either Wednesday or Thursday. This is a different type of adversity for John Robinson and Mike Vrabel. And I am very curious and intrigued. Look, I've I've always said this, and this is a cliche, and it's been an age-old rule for a long, long time, is I believe that the measure of a man is found out when pressure is applied. 
And I've always felt that. I've experienced that in my own life. And I've seen that in other people. When pressure is applied, you actually find out who can actually do it. Or who do you not really trust that much? And you've got to, to kind of make sure that it's going the right way. John Robinson and Mike Vrabel, they are going to get a new type of pressure that is applied. And Jamie, who was watching last night, brings up, I brought up Amy. And for the first time, I felt, and this is weird, you don't feel bad for a billionaire, but I did feel embarrassed or th thought that like Amy, Adam Strunk, the owner of the Tennessee Titans, would have been embarrassed by last night. Mm -hmm. It's too early in the season. You've spent way too much money in the offseason on everything, right? Whether it's renovations, whether it's the talk of a new stadium, whether it's players, whether it's bonusing, you know, Derrick Henry $2 million just, you know, for S and G's. And well, that, that was to create cap space. Uh, but but you're spending a lot of money and then yeah. you're getting a 41 to 7 result. And that is always a tough pill to swallow. And so when change happens, it comes from who's in charge. Because the person that is who's in charge of any business, any company, they have they're responsible for that. It's not Mike Vrabel, it's not John Robinson. It is Amy Adams Strunk who is responsible for that. And, and I'll say this: if you're a Titans fan watching this show right now and you are as disappointed as I think you probably are. I do think you can like the fact that Amy Adams Strunk has made that hard decision before. That she's not afraid, and I said this last night too, she's not afraid to fire a head coach right after he won a playoff game. Right? And we're not right? talking about that now. No, like, I, I, I know. I'm just saying. But I'm we're just, not talking about Mike Vrabel. I'm just saying, right, but I'm, I'm talking about Amy Adams Strunk and her track record of making hard decisions. She's got a good track record of it that she decided that it was the right thing to move on from Malarkey in that situation. Now, we'll say, what was the reason why they moved on from Malarkey? Because he was being too loyal to his offensive coordinator who wasn't performing very well. So, <laughs> where, where are we? Where, where bum, are bum, we? Bum. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Deja yeah. vu a little bit. A little yeah. bit, not completely. But five years later, you're kind of in a, uh, you're approaching a similar situation right there. Well, and... It's good to be loyal. Loyalty is a good quality. But loyal to a fault is also another thing. And Todd Downing doesn't have much time. It's game two. Guys, there's, there's 18 weeks, 17 yeah. games. It, it, we're just starting. It's September. It hadn't even gotten – you hadn't even had to put on a jacket yet here in Nashville. All right, it's, it's like going to be 90-something degrees today. All right. All right, A to Z Sports here live. Uh, we are going. To, speaking of embarrassing, we're going to play some video from Caleb Farley that just makes you feel uh, bad <laughs> for Caleb Farley. Uh, but also ask you guys this question: Who disappointed you the most last night in that loss to the Bills? Who disappointed you the most from the Titans and the beatdown from the Bills last night? But first, let me tell you guys about the Bone and Joint Institute. Bone and Joint. TN.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Uh, they will take care of you and help you with any injury you possibly can get uh, over whatever it might be, sports or just life in general. Boneandjointtn.org. We've also partnered with them uh, this season to give away tight uh, Vols tickets, excuse me, and we have done that. I have the winner that I randomly selected last night right before the game started, and I will announce that on our social media after the show for the Tennessee, Florida game. We had a ton of people enter that. Thanks to the bone and joint Institute for that. we got two more game giveaways for the balls coming up later this season, bone and joint TN.org. We are powered by bet MGM hooking you up right there with a risk-free bet up to a thousand dollars. And also if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We do this and talk and break down all of the games uh, throughout the course of the Titan season. And we also, if you're an NFL fan, make sure you subscribe to our film room. James Foster will be breaking down film from last night's game, and that's going to be probably ugly. But get it locked and subscribe, A to Z Sports Film Room. I will comment in the YouTube section. But if you just go to YouTube, type A to Z Sports Film Room, hit the subscribe. We've got all sorts of content. I saw some Bill – Jessica actually was a Bills fan. I saw that. I read that because she she followed back up that comment yeah. with that. I think we got uh, some some Bills and Titans fans trying to figure yeah. out what the hell happened last night. Subscribe to our A to Z Sports film room. 
and they're hooking up with some really, really good content. Yeah, so Caleb Farley, uh, we'll read your comments for who disappointed you most last night in that loss, but Caleb Farley, two games against the Bills have not gone very well. Last season, he tore his ACL against the Bills, and last night gave up a lot of X plays, as you'll hear him describe. You know, I, uh, I practiced hard this week. I prepared hard this week. I showed up very ready for a fist fight. Um, gave up an X play on a fade. You know, can't get it back. Um, got punched in the mouth. You know, and you know, I was trying to go get some punches back in, and that's just, um, it didn't work out that way. So, I mean, I, I don't really have uh, too much. I don't want to speak too much on that, really. How do you go about how do you go about regrouping, right, and not letting this thing continue to carry over into next week and probably I mean, you can't. It's over. Uh, you can only get better, work harder, continue to do what they ask you to do. I mean, it sucks. It's embarrassing. It's, um, it's really no, no direct answer for it. It's hard to hear uh, Farley talk like that. He just looks like he has no confidence. He, he looks like everything that he believed about himself was just gone. Or about uh, the team. I think it's a lot about himself. You know, I mean, he got, you talk about preparing for a fist fight in that game last night. And he said he got punched in the mouth and gave up plays and tried to get some back, but couldn't. And he just was like staring into the abyss of just wondering, you know, what's happening to me? <laughs> like That's kind of what it feels like Caleb Farley was thinking uh, throughout that conversation there. Well, Caleb Farley has a big target on his back. And, you know, it's kind of been building. That's been a building target because you don't see him, you know, they draft him because of his injury, right? They have the ability to draft him for his injury because they did the same thing with Jeffrey Simmons and some other players and ha had okay success. And then Farley tears his ACL – is out all last year. He comes in in his second year, and he's you know a primed to play a big role. Gets beat out by a rookie, and then now he's still playing minutes because the other starting corner and Christian Fulton got hurt in week one. So he's thrown into a role that the coaching staff has already told us that he is not ready for. Mm -hmm. And then we see that last night in Buffalo that he wasn't. He's just not ready for it, and he doesn't have. The skill set, Austin, you bring up this all the time. Caleb Farley has not played a lot of football. You see that he has not played a lot of football mm -hmm. when he plays football, especially last night. Number three, you get you're a single digit dude. <laughs> you can't be. You got a target on your back. You, you want to go back to the, remember that? I thought I didn't think Mike Grable would just give Caleb Farley number three as a first round but pick, he, but he did, and I. I've always, it's always sat weird with me. I don't think freshmen or rookies in college or the NFL should be allowed to wear single digits unless they're a kicker or quarterback. I think I think single digit numbers need to be earned. And I get in the NFL it's hard because if you have to, if you change your number, you got to buy out all the jerseys that are out there in stores to swap it. There's, there's process to that, right? College there's is not. business to it. No, I I get it. There's there is business, but. Seriously, single digit, you got to be a bad dude if you're going to rock a single digit, not as a quarterback or a kicker. And Caleb Farley, not a bad dude. He's kind of soft, in my opinion. Well, uh, that will probably be on tap. We actually had a, uh, keep talking about film room, but we had a Caleb Farley film room on some of the things that he had, he had done. Through the first two weeks, he has not looked good. And you, we talk about disappointed I, I we're gonna ask this question, you know, who are you disappointed in? Caleb Farley is not my answer because I didn't think I necessarily expected a lot. I right. was I was still in wait and see mode. Also, I'm I'm kind of getting tired of wait and see mode. It's been two games, it's been two weeks, and I'm still wait. I'm gonna wait and see about Traylon Burks. I'm gonna wait and see about Robert Woods. I'm gonna wait and see about Caleb Farley. I'm gonna wait and see, wait and see. I'm tired of doing that. And so, who who are you most disappointed in? Because I, like I just for, you, before you answer, I'm going to go with a player and not a coach because I feel like I've talked enough about Todd Downing. I'm going with the player. Okay, cool. So so who's your player? I'm disappointed in Kyle Phillips. I got got. I thought he was going to be a really good punt returner, and I said that with confidence mm -hmm. in the preseason. 
I remember me saying that. I remember what I said. And I, the reason I'm disappointed is the word because I got got. He is not a good punt returner. He is a head case. You never once ever try to catch a punt like this. We well, stumbled, and, right? And, and I thought, do, well, he well, can't stumble. You don't get grace. You already screwed your grace up in week one. And, and that's, that is just the deal. You don't get a bunch of opportunities with a punt return because they don't trust you. And once somebody doesn't trust you, they've yeah. got to keep checking on you. And yeah. if they keep checking on you, then the, the, it takes them away from what they should be doing. So I'm truly disappointed in Kyle Phillips as a punt returner. I don't, I'm not going to say a wide receiver. As a punt returner, I'm disappointed in him. So I, I unfortunately, Kyle Phillips was also going to be my guy <laughs> and my answer on that. So um, I, I do, it is Kyle Phillips for me. And I, what I was going to say is I, I think, one of the better things that came out of the ESPN broadcast booth last night was Dan Orlovsky and Lewis Riddick breaking down what makes the Bills punter effective with how he spins the football. And Kyle Phillips got fooled by it, and he misjudged it. He stumbled, which made him go from elbows to sides to hands up, right? And you're right. You never catch a punt like this. It's always here. And so now the fact that he's muffed two pumps, punts in two games – it feels like a Dory Jackson deja vu all over again, right? You draft a guy, ironically, from the Pac-12, who was a really good special teams return man in college, who had all those traits, who was fearless when it comes uh, to being able to return punts. He has a great first impression as a punt returner, going 46 yards the first time he touched the ball. A Dory returned one for a touchdown one time. He got called back for a hold, but he still did it, right? Because, then yeah. it then it all poof down and drop punts. Now it's a head case. And so now I'm, I, I hope Kyle Phillips can do what Adore was unable to do and get out of that and not be uh, somebody who falls into having the yips. Um, we'll see what happens. And then Brent says hooker muffed the punt too. Yeah. Amani hooker is their safe returner. He's well, been that no, no, no. Their safe returner is Robert Woods because he got to the point where we got to put our veteran wide receiver that we traded with the LA Rams to come out there and return punts. No, not return it, just catch it. That's the not, not return it. There is zero return. It's just catch the damn ball. Because and I, you know, Buck tweeted this last night. Like, why is Hooker out there? Well, Amani Hooker in his entire career as a Titan has been their safe return guy uh, for the punts. He's always done it. And the reason why he was out there last night is because outside of Kyle Phillips and Monty Hooker and Traylon Burks, they cut everybody else who returned punts uh, in the preseason, right? There's nobody else out there who got reps and they had to rely on Robert Woods because apparently the yips are contagious with the Titans right now. Shane brings up Zach Cunningham. Shane says, mine is Zach Cunningham. Dude yep. is a proven tackler and the guy is missing tackles at an alarming rate this year. That's disappointment. And, and and because you went with Kyle Phillips and I was initially going to go with Kyle Phillips, my backup was going to be Zach Cunningham. The first uh, touchdown the Bills scored, which was the screen to the fullback, and you allowed that guy to break a tackle and run by everybody else into the end zone. Uh, Zach Cunningham looked like he forgot what makes you a good tackler. He lunged with his arms and reached instead of bringing his feet to the ball carrier. And like I remember Zach us interviewing Zach Cunningham when he was a senior at Vanderbilt uh, down the road on what makes him a good tackler and him being a student of the tackling art and craft and knowing that there are different techniques and different types of tackles as a college player and working on those to become a good player. And he was a great player at Vandy and he's been a really good linebacker in the NFL up until week one and week two. He's looked terrible uh, in the first two weeks and he gave up that touchdown uh, on the opening drive because he just flat out forgot tackling technique for no reason. You know, Michael brings up a comment that I, I think, you know, is very honest. He says, Lawan, it's over and it's not that I'm disappointed in him. I'm just disappointed at the situation. So that was one of the questions is who are you disappointed in from last night? And, and Michael clarifies, it's not in Lawan, it's, it's the situation. And we don't know fully what the situation is. I did, during a break, I went back, because I record all the games, and I went back to watch that play. 
And what I saw was Luan, it was a it was to the right side, and Luan just went right down the line. It didn't look like he made any contact with anybody and just went down and then started writhing in pain. And when that we've seen enough football that that is not a good situation. He did walk off. He wasn't carted off or didn't have an air cast or anything like that. So we don't know what is going on with Taylor Lewan, but Austin, that is a major blow to this offensive line because then you're starting to duct tape things together. And the guy that you drafted to be your fill-in offensive lineman or really to be a stable offensive lineman who is Dylan Radens, you don't trust as far as you can throw him. You won't even throw him out there. The only time you'll throw him out there is in special packages. So, like, that, I think, that is a major blow to this football team if, in fact, Taylor Lewan's injury is an extended – for an extended amount of time, and we just don't know that yet. Yeah, and, like, you can't get mad at a player for getting hurt. And, like, and that's – Michael clarified that. Yeah, and, and I agree. That. And, and I just feel like I need to say that. But, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you. It's It's a very frustrating situation – to what seems like every third or fourth game, seeing Taylor Lewan hurt again and not knowing what that is. And you know, he's even admitted this that he's dramatic and over dramatic at time. Like those are his words. Uh, and so I, I think it's you know, what happens with him is a big deal because they need him. Uh, and you bring up Dylan Radens. Zach, how many snaps do you think Dylan Radens played on offense last night? And and I'll tell you this. Yeah, uh, by saying that Lawan played one, well, right? Yeah. Yeah, he that. played one. Ben Jones came out when Ryan Tannehill came out and Corey Levin came in. So they were using backups. How many snaps do you think Dylan Radens played on offense last night? My gut was gonna say three or four, so I'll say four. Three. 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 So you couldn't even like Dylan Radens was not worth getting those last 17 snaps of the game just for the hell of it. They don't to the tight. No, I know, but that's, that's the crazy, like they just, they took Tannehill and Ben Jones out and they just said, Dylan, you can sit next to Tannehill and Ben Jones. <laughs> like, like we'll go get Corey Levin and Malik Willis work, but not you, man. Well, that's not what the, the chat brought up earlier is these draft picks are starting to snowball. There's a snowball effect when you start missing. Raidens and Isaiah Wilson are two glaring misses, right, so far. One never played, and the other one is dressing out, but they don't want him to play. Right. I will say this about Lawan because I don't know what's going to happen to him. But the fan base, it has been tumultuous, right? And it's been on both of them, right? When you ask somebody to call you dad, that there's a responsibility to that. And then all of a sudden, performance-enhancing drugs, suspension, ACL, podcast, then coming back last year against Chandler Jones, then kind of earning back some trust, and then surviving the Saffold versus Lawan sweepstakes because in the offseason, you know, John Robinson had to pick one. He picked yep. Lawan. He didn't pick Saffold. Saffold's not playing for the best team in the NFL. And here we are hurt again. You know, there's been a lot of this term in this show, grace. You don't get grace. You've expunged, expunged it. It's expended. You, grace? She it, died 30 years ago. Right? <laughs> and so that, I think, is the struggle for Titans fans through the history of Taylor Lewan. Some of it has been Lewan's fault. Some of it has not. That's just, you know, you get hurt. Uh, but... This is a major blow. You still need him out there. He's still a quality left tackle. And so through all of that, you still need 77 protecting 17. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nick. Nick says, A to Z calls out J-Rob's players without actually saying his name and blaming him. Again, we've stated this earlier in the show. We will discuss John Robinson tomorrow. Today, uh, is uh, about what happened last night. John Robinson. I we just said him. We, we, I, I don't understand Nick's uh, ability to just forget and not hear all the things that we say negatively about John Robinson. This is the last show. I mean, if you've listened to the show, this is the last show that is going to run scared or not say something 
if we actually think it. At least, I mean, from my standpoint, I do not care. There's no scared. I, you, we criticize who needs to be criticized. And, and I knew this was going to happen. Everybody is sitting there praying up to Josh, no flash Gordon to come in and, you know, be the savior. That dude sucks. He's not good. He's, so he's in the same boat as Raiden's. They don't want to play him. Like, it, he's, he's not good enough. So he, there is no savior. This is a structural problem. And that's what they have to fix in the next two weeks. Yeah, sure. A to Z Sports Live on this Tuesday. Let's throw shade. So, again, uh, we're not doing trivia on Tuesday like normal because I didn't think it was appropriate to do trivia right now after the Titans had their worst loss in four-plus years uh, with Mike Vrabel as head coach. So, we're just going to keep it on brand and do shade. So, get your shade ready. It's time to throw shade. Typically, on Wednesdays, but throwing shade on a Tuesday, Zach, but tell everybody about Wilson County Hyundai. Yeah, Wilson County Hyundai is where you need to go to get your next ride. They're hooking you up, whether you have a, if you need a full-size SUV or if you need a four-door sedan, your perfect make and model is right around the corner. That's WilsonCountyHyundai.com. Payne Bone is family-owned and operated, and we have test-driven. I've test-driven. I've had a Sonata. I love the Sonata. I love the Hyundai brand. That's why we endorse it here on this show. They have what you need. They have the Ionic, which also is battery powered. They've got the Palisade. It's fuel efficient, but also has a third row seating for your, for your kids, your family. They've got it. You've just got to go find it. That's at WilsonCountyHyundai.com. Don't forget, you need to, you need to do it. Download the BetMGM app. Use our code ATOZ Sports. You get a risk free bet on pro football up to $1,000 after your first deposit. It's pretty easy. All you got to do, you download the app in the App Store or Google Play Store. Then you use that code ATOZ Sports. Boom, risk-free bet on pro football up to $1,000 with your first bet. Time to throw some shade. All right, Shade, I'm sure, will be thrown on the Tennessee Titans. I'm sure Shade will be thrown on uh, Todd Downing and all that. Uh, you know, I see Donald saying A.J. Brown somewhere laughing his ass off, probably. Uh, yeah, I, I want to talk about that this week. I'm writing that in. I'm penciling that in for Wednesday or Thursday. We're going to have to face the fire, Austin, because everybody sat there and criticized my ass for sitting there saying you shouldn't trade A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown no, is not- too damn good. You make the deal. You don't lowball him. And now the proof is in the pudding. He's kicking ass like we expected him to, and the Titans are getting their ass kicked. All right, so we will discuss that uh, Wednesday or Thursday along with John Robinson opinions and analysis as well. Uh, so, uh, Zach, do you want to start shade or, or – or do you want to? Uh, I am personally not going to throw my shade. I'm going to have somebody else throw shade. Okay. And this is even shade that this person had to come out of the woodwork and throw shade. Frank Whitecheck has tweeted twice in like three years. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Frank at 8 50 p.m. on 9 19 22 from his iPhone just tweets out hashtag embarrassing. So. You have the, you know, number 89, a huge figure in, in Nashville and obviously in the Titans franchise. He's throwing shade. So the, I agree with Frank Shade. But this dude hadn't tweeted. He hadn't done anything. And then all of a sudden, just randomly just pops up. And it's like, whoa, Frank, where you been? Oh, like, 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 retweet, retweet. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I, that's, that is essentially my shade from Frank uh, from, you know, the last – Last night's game, it's brutal. Yeah, well, and I agree with Donald. Uh, I'm just happy that Frank Wycheck is doing well uh, because he's just kind of fallen off the face of the earth, right? Like when you have a, a public uh, persona in a city for as long as Frank did, he just disappears and then you, you hear about some struggles he might be having or whatever, but it's kind of good to hear from Frank. <laughs> and uh, Titan says, how much does Frank's tweet matter? Like in terms of what? In terms of like, the Titans changing something because Frank yeah, White yeah, tweeted zero. a year. No, nothing. It doesn't matter anything. Titans JQZ. Uh, but uh, you know, it is entertaining. Uh Carl says throwing shade at coordinators for the horrible play calling. Uh Michael says throwing shade at the Manning brothers for always dodging the Titans on Monday Night Football 
at least that would have been entertaining. Well, so we figured out why. The duel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, ESPN is not going to have you choose between. Th- they couldn't even. Ha- they couldn't. They were struggling to make you choose between two. I so, did confirm that last night. I'm glad that got brought up because I wanted to bring that up because yeah. I did that. I, you know, I was like, man, that that's too bad that because I love the Manning cast, but ESPN is not going to have you pick between the Manning cast, a Titans football game that starts at six fifteen, and then the Eagles Vikings, and then both games are terrible. Yeah, I have two shades. Uh, one is was on one has to do with the game last night. One does not. Uh, but the one that had to do with the game is the ESPN broadcast. How brutal was that? Was I, the the entire first half? It seemed like every third play, Steve Levy was reading a promo for the game coming up on ABC, and it was like I truly felt like ESPN wanted us all to stop watching ESPN and go watch ABC once that game started. It was, all right, here's uh, Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson getting warmed up. That's kickoff in 20 minutes. And then, okay, kickoff's coming up on ABC. It was, it was, and then the split screen, get that the hell away. People are watching Titans Bills because they want to watch Titans Bills. People will go watch Vikings Eagles because they want to go watch Vikings Eagles. Stop making us watch both. They had the score up during the game. This is not March Madness. This is not March Madness when you've got a tournament going on and you've got games on four channels, including True TV. I need the score in the top right-hand corner to tell me that something's on True TV and to remind me that True TV is a channel that exists. I don't need ESPN telling me to go watch ABC. I'm watching the game that I want to watch. So it's just embarrassing. It's a ridiculous strategy. I'm gonna I'm gonna sprinkle some shade on on uh, with that. Dan Orlovsky, if did you and this clip was circling around the internet. Yeah. And Dan Orlovsky missed had a miscue. He messed up, he fumbled up. Yeah, he, he did something like that. But then he did what you never do when you're on a live broadcast. He made this sound, and I'm gonna do this. I'll apologize in advance, but he did don't do that. Don't ever do that in a broadcast, ever. That was the dumbest thing. And you can go back to the internet. Just search Twitter, Dan Orlovsky, fumble, Barstool's got it, somebody's got it. Never make that sound. I am embarrassed that I just made that sound and you saw my face make that sound. And I hope that the people listening on audio after the fact don't go back and search that sound to look at my dumb face, make that sound. Never make that sound. That is my shade to the broadcast booth on top of your shade. Yeah. And um, you just, whenever you look, people who talk for a living like we do, we stumble on words. We say a lot of things fast at times. uh, And usually we mess up sometimes. Somebody called me out saying I was drunk in the pregame show yesterday because I slurred a few words. In reality, I forgot my glass of water in the other room. (laughs) So, like, people mess up. Don't draw attention to make your mess up more noticeable and try to play it off as being goofy by making a fart noise with your mouth. So move on. And then you have two other guys that are either going to make it comical to ease the tension or move forward. And here, I'll give you another example. Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. Last night, Troy Aikman had a mess up. He was talking about a Vikings wide receiver and said that he played for the Eagles. And I was sitting there like, is Joe going to say anything? Joe just moved on. Yeah. And then the play happened, touchdown happened. So like, but never make that fart noise on yeah. national television. And that is Dan Orlovsky being inexperienced. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, John says, uh, wasn't any Music City Miracle last night for sure. Yeah, it'll be a Music City Miracle when Todd Downing stops calling toss plays to Derrick Henry. Uh, my other shade, Zach, is going on the lady that was driving in the car behind me when I was trying to exit the bank parking lot. So I had to go to the bank in person for some business stuff for us. I usually don't have to do that. Love mobile banking and all that, but had to go to the bank for something real quick. And so I was sitting, pulling out of the parking lot. There's a red light. I needed to turn left. The lady behind me wanted to turn right, but I had to turn left. That was the, that was the direction. There's one lane. There's yeah, there's one lane. I had to turn left. That's to go home. Like turning left is going home. Turning right is going to make me have to go around a bunch of green hills to then get back home. So I'm turning left, right? She honked at me for turning, for having to turn left. 
and she waved in her in her in her windshield at like go. And I I rolled down my window with my left blinker had been on the entire time. And I pointed left. Like that's what that means. I, I pointed back to my blinker and pointed left. And like, did she want me to run the red light where there was clearly a camera above the red light that would have caught me running it? Or did she want me to after you told her you were doing going left? Did she Zach? I it was a red light. I was sitting at the red light and I had my left blinker on the entire time. It was kind of a long light, yeah. But she honked at me and she was like, Go. I'm like, where? Like, I'm clearly signaling that I'm turning (laughs) left, and there's a camera above this red light. So you either want me to get a ticket for running the red light or to inconvenience myself in going a direction I don't want to go for your own purposes. So that lady just could suck it. Like, that was terrible. Like, who does that? Like, what a crazy person to think that that's a reasonable response to do that in a vehicle. Like, and here's the thing about cars. She would never say that to anybody's face. But when you're in a vehicle... That's Twitter. That's Twitter. (laughs) When you're in a vehicle, it's basically like being on social media. There are keyboard warriors and there are steering wheel warriors. And that lady is a steering wheel warrior. Well, the tough part about that is, you know, everybody everybody has a mom and a dad, whether you know them or not, whether they're dead or alive. And everybody has road rage. There is everybody has gotten road rage in their time. And it's what what level do you take your road rage? Right? What level? And because you're right, they but but some people, some people will get out of their car and go nuts up. And that's where you gotta, that's that's where people get shot. No, and That's so like I, I, and like I, I am not a flip somebody off in a vehicle person because I would never flip somebody off to their face. So why would I do that? I, uh, I, I yeah, just, I'll, flip, I'll flip somebody off right. To their I face. don't. I don't. I would flip, do both, and I, I have done both. It would it, it would take a lot for me to flip somebody off to their face. <laughs> so, but like, and and Jeff says oh, Austin, she was just confused that I was actually using a turn signal. Yeah, shocker. Uh, but it, I just simply point out my window. Left, like at my point out my blinker, and I said left. Like clearly, that's the direction I'm going. There's a red light, ma'am. I cannot go, or I'm going to get a ticket that I don't want to pay for. That's that's my shade. Well, we flipped shade from uh, Wednesday to Tuesday because of the circumstance. I thought we had some pretty good shade today. Yep, uh, absolutely. All right, guys, have a good Tuesday. If you want to revel in the negativity of the Titans, go check out a to z sports.com. We've got a lot of good analysis. Articles up there from Buck, from Sam, from Adam, from Jack, and others. Uh, Trey John has an article coming out today. So check it out, a to z sports.com slash Nashville for all of our Titans content there. And Buck Rising will be live tonight for A to Z Sports Prime Time for his first shot at reacting to this with A to Z. So we'll see you guys later on. Make sure while you're here uh, that you do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've had great audiences on YouTube the last couple of days. So make sure you subscribe while you're at it. Like the video while you're at it as well. And we'll talk to you guys Wednesday morning. Have a good one. Appreciate it as always. Adios.